In order for the tire shine to work properly when it's installed, it needs to be set to approximately six and a half to as much as seven inches to the center of the foam pad. This one here is sitting right about six and a half to almost seven here. On this end, on our exit end, we're a little bit lower, about five and a half to six. So we're gonna need to raise this one up a little bit. In order to do this, our bearings are adjustable. They're slotted. The bolt goes through the back of the slotted mount into the bearing. We're gonna need to loosen these up and pry this side of the unit up approximately an inch. So we're gonna loosen these bolts up. All right, Bubba gives a little pressure. So with Bubba on the, on the pry bar, we raise this up here a little bit. Come back over here and check our center line. We're about six. We gotta go up, what about other? Oh, you got it there, okay. Hold it right there. Okay. It looks like a full inch. That's what we're looking for. Now after making the adjustment, we can see we're seven inches to the center of the pad there and six and a half to the center of the sp sponge pad. And we're level across both sides. So that one's okay. On the driver's side, because we're a front wheel pull conveyor and our conveyor is set three quarters of an inch lower than the floor on this side, we need to lower this brush. We want to go down about a half an inch. So what we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to support the bearing on each side, loosen the bolts up, and then lower this brush down about a half an inch. So we'll put the bar right underneath the bearing. Okay, so we've loosened this one here up and dropped it a little bit. We're gonna tighten it up. And then we'll go back and readjust to the other side. Once we have the height adjustment set, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set the pressure and the retract uh, positions on the brush from the panel itself. The panel itself has both driver's side and passenger side controls. This was the same with the Mac valve. We press one in and we see the brush extend out. So we've got about just under 40 pounds of pressure extending to push the, the, the pad against the tire on the driver's side. On the passenger side, press it for extend. And we have it set at about a little over 40 PSI. We're going to just take it up to 50 PSI to squeeze against the tire to help dress it. Our pressure coming into the entire panel is at 60. We're going to take that up to about 80. That'll give us plenty of air to operate. Our two chemical solenoid valves, they run off a three-way solenoid valve so that we exhaust the air pressure and, and not to let the um, pump siphon or run with ex excess pressure. We press the pumps in here and we got them both set at about 50 PSI, which will be fine. We'll let them run for a minute or two here. Just make sure we're fully primed. We are. And you hear the exhaust, and that's what's relieving the pressure from the pump so it doesn't siphon. Inside this unit here are our two timers. We're going to open this up right now so we can prime this unit and get it ready to run. Proper settings for the unit to run for startup is the, we have two timers. One timer is for our chemical control. It's set up at E004S, which means every time we send an input from the computer into the panel, we're energizing these two solenoid valves to let them come out and dress the tire. The timer set at a four is gonna allow the power to go down to the solenoid valve and energize these two pumps for four seconds, giving us approximately four ounces per vehicle. The second timer is set up as a watering timer where we can keep the pads lubricated um, automatically in case we're not selling a lot of services and we want to keep the, 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 the pad primed to keep the pad wet. The way we do that is we have this plugged into a standard 110 volt circuit. Okay, the timer is on and right now it's set at every hour it'll come on for 10 seconds. And if we want to take that down to zero, or take the time down, 
like that. We take the zero down. Now we're pumping water through this here out into our pads and we're pumping chemical, any chemicals in the manifold right into the sponge pads. We set it back at an hour because right now what we want to do, we'll leave it at an, one hour and 10 seconds. The green one being on one for one hour on the off cycle and the on being 10 seconds, which is one digit on the uh, red timer. So right now, if we leave the switch in the on position and the power is on, every hour that valve will go on for 10 seconds and help to keep the pads wet. The busier you get, the more cars you sell, the less need there is to do that. Instead of having an employee go to the computer, all they gotta do is come here and shut off the switch. And that timer's off and it will no longer do it. For right now, we'll leave it on. And what we'll do here is we're gonna come down and take this timer to zero seconds, which means once we energize it from the motor control center or from the computer, not the motor control center, from the actual um, override function on the computer, this will come on and because there's no time on there, the, the, these will pump until we shut it off. And to prime up the unit, we want to usually turn it on and pump it so that we get approximately um, two gallons of product in each side of the pads. This has been primed once. We're going to prime it again now because it's been a few days before it's been operated. And uh, we'll see how we watch the chemical saturate the sponge pads and see it penetrate through the sponge and get it ready to run. So you can see here now we're starting to get some water and some chemical being applied out and now starting to come through the face of the pad and that's what we call getting it primed up ready to run. We get that pad in there, I get the chemical on the face of the pad and it'll be ready to run some test cars. And you can see how much is in, the, in each one of the cells. Once we've got the unit primed up again, we'll set the timer back to four seconds. We'll set this one here back to one hour for 10 seconds. Put our cover back on. And if this was a new machine, first time, or new sponges, we would go to the computer and set the function up as a sequential function, just temporarily, and try to dress about the next 15 or 20 cars to get the sponge pads broken in and fully saturated and ready to dress properly. Okay. So all of our controls are set, everything's back in the normal position, and this machine's ready to run. The tire shine machine has um, eight bearings on each side. All these are just pivotal bearings that are one month grease requirements, uh, top and bottom on both sides of the arms, both the front and the back. Again, three shots of grease once a month. Remember to degrease so we keep them clean. And on this side here, same thing here, three shots here, and three shots here, and then degrease. Same thing on all four arms on a monthly basis. The oil flow bottles that are on the machines are filled with hydraulic oil. They can also be filled with antifreeze or aqua blue. The flow control valve here is designed just to adjust the flow of the machine coming returning home. So the valve is open quite a ways because we do have a little nozzle in the air, uh, the four-way air valve on the exhaust port. So we're controlling how fast it moves so it's very controlled motion so it's not banging against the car, we're not slamming back against the stops. If the oil gets murky or if we get a leak in the cylinder, the oil would need to be filled. Before filling it, we need to shut off the air supply to the entire panel, bleed it off by energizing the solenoid valves by the little silver buttons. Then we can remove one of the plugs and add fluid to it. The fluid does nothing more than make it a nice smooth motion like you see it when it moves in and out. It does nothing else. It's not needed for operation. It's just designed for smooth operation with air over oil on the oil cylinder. When you change the sponges or flip them over or inspect the nozzles to make sure that they're not clogged, the easiest way to do it is to pull all the spring clips for all of the, the, pist the pins. Uh, I see some people try to cheat and just take off the front side and then tuck the sponge in. That just makes the job a little bit harder, and then they don't last as long. As you do them, just keep all the, the pins in one spot. When you remove all the pins, reach in here and lift up the entire plate. Gather the pins that popped out, just to keep them all together. All four sponges are exactly the same. 
When you take them out, they're all symmetrical in every way. They can be flipped over from end to end. They can be swapped from side to side. Inside here, we've got eight nozzles on each sponge pad. The best way to make sure that they're unclogged would be to turn on the water manifold, let them spray to make sure that they spray pop properly, turn our water down to zero. We'll see that the water will start to spray. And it comes out heavy at first because it's pushing uh, the chemical, which is very thick. Once the chemical is out, we'll see that we'll get a full fan spray of water. But when it operates the other way, all we're trying to do is push the chemical into the sponge pad to keep it saturated, keep some water and moisture in there. And that's one way to find out to make sure that we're all unclogged. You can see now that the chemical's leaving and the water's coming out, it comes out a little bit finer spray. And we know we have totally unclogged nozzles. Instead of pushing chemical through the whole line and, and ruining the whole line, we're taking the water and pushing it in right here at the T. So all we've done is put water from here into the manifold. And in 10 seconds, you see what it does. It, it pushes all that extra, excess chemical that's in the manifold into the sponge pad, keeping it saturated and keeping it ready and lubricated. We don't use any more chemical by using that, that feature. All we do is keep the pad wet and keep chemical in the pad. The next time the chemical comes on, it's going to take a few applications to fill the, the manifold up again. If we do 20 applications between cars, we'll be spraying chemical again in there within the next five or 10 cars. If not, it'll be diluted with water, which will help it run through the pad. That's why we designed it to be in the drip space. When we're done and we want to reattach the, 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 the sponge, we, we need to take it, line it up with the manifold, and make sure that it's on completely. Completely under the manifold, all the way to the back, and pushed all the way in on both sides so that it's covering the entire manifold. Pick up your plate with all the nozzles attached, kind of line them up, give them a little jiggle to get started and get all your nozzles back into place. Now, the trick here, the easiest ones to get started are the ones that are on the sponge side. If you pick up the sponge, line up the pin, you can get it right inside the, the hole and get one or two of your spring clips started. And then it'll be much easier to line up your back side. back one falls in place. You're going to have to get either bend over real far or get good with your fingers. Feel the hole. Slide your pin in place.